Good day, everyone. My name is Karchero Miedi from the University of Pretoria in South Africa. Today, I will be presenting on the recovery and synthesis of a dimethyl composite from acid mine drainage and its application for the removal of hexavalent chromium and Congo red dye from wastewater. This is my presentation outline. I will start by introducing acid mine drainage and its benefits and impacts. I will then talk about minerals recovery and the processes involved. Thereafter, I will talk about how chromium and Congo red dye are two of the major pollutants of water. Then I will talk about the treatment technologies that have been studied and explored for the treatment of acid mine drainage, chromium and Congo red dye contaminated water. I will then move on to the aim and objectives of the study, the materials and methods that were adopted. I will then discuss the results that were obtained, conclude and make recommendations. Mining significantly contributes towards gross domestic product, job creation and poverty alleviation. However, on the other hand, it has been reported to pose serious environmental impacts. This is attributed to the end products that are generated from the mineral extraction processes. For example, one of the major products of mining is acid mine drainage, which contains toxic chemical species such as iron, aluminium, manganese, sulfate, amongst others, which are the major components of AMD. The other components of acid mine drainage are in traces, and that include heavy metals such as arsenic, chromium, zinc, just to name a few. As such, this effluent needs to be treated prior release into the environment because it contains toxic chemical species. However, a number of technologies have been studied and employed in the treatment of acid mine drainage, but secondary pollution has been an issue of prime concern as there are disposal costs that are associated with the management of toxic chemical species, which then become a serious environmental concern. Hence, we refer to it as secondary pollution. This also contributes to incurring of additional costs. Well, that's where the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal Report comes in, which advocates for circular economy in waste beneficiation, thereby moving away from waste disposal. Different studies have been focusing on value recovery and valorization. In value recovery, we talk about minerals that are recovered through different technologies such as precipitation, adsorption, filtration, coagulation, just to name a few. This study opted for selective precipitation in the recovery of diametal composite from authentic acid mine drainage. Different studies have reported that aluminium and iron have strong affinity to chromium and the techniques thereof have been successfully employed. Hence, this study aimed to recover aluminium and iron as a dimethyl composite from authentic acid mine drainage to remove chromium and Congo red dye from wastewater. Chromium is a heavy metal with prime states of plus three and plus six, of which plus six is the most toxic. Ecotoxicological impacts associated with chromium have been reported to be teratogenic, carcinogenic, and mutagenic. On the other hand, Congo red dye is an anionic dye mostly used in textile, printing, and plastic industries, and its ecotoxicological impacts include the impairment of water quality as well as teratogenic, mutagenic, and carcinogenic. That is why it is important for these pollutants to be removed from water for the protection of the environment and human health. Some of the studies reported for chromium and Congo red dye removal include adsorption, filtration, biosorption, etc. This study focused on adsorption as the removal technique of chromium and Congo red dye from wastewater. This study was governed by the following aim and objectives, of which the overall aim was to recover and synthesize a dimethyl composite from authentic acid mine drainage and explore its application in the removal of hexavalent chromium and Congo red dye from wastewater. In order to achieve the overall aim of the study, the authors had to come up with objectives of which the first one was to recover dimethyl composites from raw acid mine drainage. The second objective was to employ different pretreatment techniques to enhance the reactivity of dimethyl composite. The third objective was to optimize conditions that are suitable for the removal of chromium and Congo red dye using the synthesized dimethyl composite. The fourth one was to characterize the dimethyl composite before and after adsorption. The fifth one was to compare the product water quality at optimized conditions with the World Health Organization water quality standards. In order to achieve the outlined aim and objectives, the following materials and methods were used. Iron-rich AMD was collected from a coal mine in South Africa. 
Chromium 6 and Congo Red dye solutions were simulated for optimization experiments. The dye metal composite was recovered and synthesized via selective precipitation. For the absorption of chromium-6 and Congo red dye, a batch experimental approach was adopted where concentration, pH, agitation, time, temperature, and dosage were optimized. FTIR, SAM, EDX, TGA, and BET were used for the characterization of a dye metal composite before and after absorption. As reflected in the table, AMD characterization results showed that the raw AMD is rich in iron, aluminum, manganese, and sulfate, and this made it viable for the recovery of iron and aluminum dimetal composites. SAM and EDX EDS show the surface morphology and the elemental composition of the recovered and synthesized dimetal composite, respectively. From the elemental composition, we see the presence of iron and aluminum recovered from raw acid mine drainage. The FTIR shows the functional groups that are in the composite, and we see the presence of hydroxyl group and water. The BET shows the surface area and porosity of the compound. The BET shows the surface area and porosity of the composite, where we see that the surface area of the material is 24.62 square meters per gram, while the TGA gives the stability in the thermal sense of the material. Optimization results of adsorption revealed that 50 milligrams per liter of chromium concentration was found as the maximum concentration that the material could absorb before oversaturation while 100 mg per liter of Congo red dye was the maximum concentration the composite could take. Moreover, 3 grams and 0 0.5 grams were the optimum doses of the material required to remove these concentrations of chromium-6 and Congo red dye, respectively. The optimum agitation time at which chromium and Congo red dye could be removed from the solutions was 180 minutes and 20 minutes respectively. When studying the effect of pH, we observed that the optimum pH for the removal of chromium-6 was at pH level 3, while Congo red dye could be greatly removed between pH levels of 3 and 8. As for the effect of temperature, the highest percentage removal of chromium-6 and Congo red dye were observed to occur at 45 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius, respectively. After the adsorption process of chromium-6 and Congo red dye, we observed the presence of new functional groups and the shifting of bands. For example, the presence of sulfur trioxide was observed after Congo red dye adsorption took place because of the presence of sulfur in the dye. Adsorption kinetics for both chemical species followed pseudo second order as opposed to pseudo first order. As depicted in the pictures, we see that the surface morphology was also observed to have changed after chromium and Congo red dye adsorption. The presence of chromium and sulfur is observed in the EDX EDS spectra, which clearly shows that adsorption did take place. The EDX mappings also show the presence of chromium and sulfur from Congo red dye after adsorption. Iron aluminum dimetal composite was successfully recovered and synthesized from acid mine drainage through selective precipitation, and its efficiency was tested through adsorption of hexavalent chromium and Congo red dye on a batch experimental approach. The material successfully removed more than 95% of chromium-6 and more than 99% of Congo red dye from wastewater at optimized conditions. A regeneration study showed that the material can be efficiently used more than four times on the adsorption of chromium-6 and Congo red dye. Future recommendations and research avenues include the fabrication of a fixed bed reactor for a continuous process, as well as research that will focus on harnessing the regenerates. Moreover, the authors will explore viable options of valorizing the regenerates. The authors acknowledge and appreciate the following organizations and people. Thank you.